will discuss mostly about normal distribution and prior to that normal distribution we will also take few example from cdl because in the previous lecture we discussed about uh, cumulative distribution function of a random variable so that's why we will come with uh, some more example on cdf finding cdf from the pdf and uh, various other probability law and after that we will discuss about normal distribution in detail and in the next lecture we will discuss about application of normal distribution uh, in order to compute or in order to estimate probability of an event so coming to outline of today's lecture first uh, i will give a recap of cdf and in the process i will discuss few more example in order to compute cdf and what are the characterization of cdf and what kind of nature it would have so generally if you see cdf of any kind of uh, uh, random variable it would be always a piecewise continuous function so piecewise continuous function it would be and we will see that how that discontinuity occurs in case of random variable also we will discuss okay afterward we will discuss about uh, normal distribution that means uh, there would be a uh, random variable continuous random variable which distribution would be a normal distribution okay and hence the corresponding uh, random variable we will call it uh, normal random variable so we will discuss in detail afterward we will discuss about applications various applications of normal distributions and uh, in the process of applying normal distribution in order to compute various thing then what we have to do we have to come up with uh, a standard normal distribution okay and uh, the standard normal distribution is very much having one characterization that uh, cdf uh, you can get in uh, value of cdf you can get in normal table so whatever normal table you see around uh, anywhere in probability so always that contains the value of cdf of uh, corresponding uh, standard normal random variable so that we will see it from that normal table how we can compute many things so coming to first part of this lecture that means cdf of a random variable and uh, just i will take example in last class i had already discussed in detail so first i will talk about C the characterization of cdf of various discrete random variable what kind of behavior it will have so if you see here in the definition of cdf simply we say that cdf is defined as a probability up to x that means uh, cdf function capital f it is defined as it is talking about probability up to x and here x happens to be discrete random variable then what we do then we sum up all these probability mass function the value of probability mass function up to x i am saying up to x i am not uh, going to find the least one just up to x i am saying so in the process of uh, uh, defining cdf we compute cdf like this way so here we will see various example like if you are having a random variable which is taking value uh, 1 2 3 4 okay you can you can say that only these possible value of x is having probability value of probability mass function uh, positive so that's why we are saying that x is taking this possible value so with respect to this possible value you can see the corresponding uh, protein mass function is already given here okay so if you are willing to find what is the cdf of this one so apply this definition and through that you will see that uh, so that means you see that uh, before x so if you are willing to find what is the value of uh, cdf for x equal to 0 so simply it would be 0 it is talking about that uh, uh, from the definition of cdf it will say that uh, we are saying that uh, we are trying to compute probability of random variable which is taking value up to zero that means here we can say that here uh, all possible value of x is taking uh, what occurrence with zero probability and hence we can simply say that value of cdf would be zero up to if you are willing to find value of cdf at here then you see that it would be zero even you go uh, up to uh, one minus epsilon so if someone is saying that what find the value of uh, uh, this uh, cdf at uh, 1 minus epsilon that means just uh, left of 1 then what would be value of uh, the cdf it would be again 0 but if you come exactly at x equal to 1 it will have a positive value thanks to this one so that's why you observe here it is coming 0 cdf is 0 up to uh, 1 minus epsilon and when you go uh, after 1 then you see there is a jump uh, here jump will come so this jump is defined by the value of this probability this height it is defined by and and that process further jump you will get x equal to 2 and likewise x equal to 3 you will get third jump and fourth jump you will get at x equal to 4 afterward you x is not observing any value so it will continue so here the value of cdf would be 1 
this value is equal to 1 so you can see that the cdf of this pd uh, protein mass function is what it is piecewise continuous and one more important property you can also you can see that it is monotonically increasing monotonically increasing easily you can say that likewise if you take another uh, protein mass function uh, that means random variable with this protein mass function and and if you are willing to find property the commutative distribution function then again this would be cdf so you can easily see that there is a discontinuity what kind of discontinuity in cdf jump discontinuity this discontinuity we are calling it jump discontinuity okay that means uh, the value at uh, left hand side and right hand side uh, right hand limit of the function would be different so that uh, due to that jump is coming okay difference would be jump amount so that is cdf you observe for uh, discrete random variable jump kind of dis discontinuity you observe so if you try to visualize those jump discontinuity for cdf of for a discrete random variable we can see like this way so suppose we are taking a binary random variable x which is defined as the number of heads when you are tossing a coin three times okay then x would be simply a, a binary random variable which will uh, what uh, for if for here x will observe value what value it will observe uh, 0 1 2 and 3 because you are performing three toss okay so that's where if you are willing to find the uh, simply you can come up with uh, here x is binomial having binomial distribution so you know uh, what is the protein mass function of x it would be, you can define it uh, like this way it would be uh, n choose x or you can put it at k there is no any issue because uh, x is taking value discreetly so you can put uh, at k as well and p to the power k p would be probability of success of each try times 1 minus p to the power n minus x okay here n is equal to 3 is already given everything is given so you can you know the uh, protein mass function of this x so now just try to see the discontinuity of uh, so x is observing value 0 1 2 so we will try to see the discontinuity over this value only so suppose if you take x equal to 1 then we try to find the value of f um, at um, just left just left of 1 then how we define this uh, value of cdf uh, from the definition it will say it will say that probability up to 1 minus delta probably that x is observing value up to 1 minus delta so what does it, uh, what are the value that uh, x is observing uh, or x is observing up to 1 minus delta so those value are just what are those those value so those value it would be just zero because one is not less than equal to 1 minus delta uh, one is greater than 1 minus delta so that's why x equal to 0 will only come so here this probability is what just it is talking about occurrence of 0 uh, x equal to 0 that means there is uh, 0 head 0 head in the three toss of a coin it is just uh, what what is the inverse image of this one it is talking about uh, the outcome tail 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 this outcome inverse image of zero is x equal to zero is this outcome okay and what is the probability of observing this outcome it is one by eight that means out of total eight number of uh, possible outcome uh, this one is occurring one okay so that's uh, one by eight so we got the value of uh, cdf at one minus delta that one is one by eight now we are willing to uh, see that uh, here we can say that uh, uh, f of x is approaching to 1 when x is approaching to 1 from left so 1 minus is talking about it is uh, again you can say that what, what is the meaning of 1 minus it means just uh, little bit left deviation uh, about 1 or left deviation 1 minus delta 1 so you can say like this way so uh, 1 by 8 is the uh, what left hand limit of this uh, cdf at 1 okay now we try to compute right hand limit also we will compute functional value at uh, one so if you are willing to cam compute cdf at one so that means x equal to one it is what does it talk about it is from the definition of cdf it is talking about probability that x is observing value up to x you can here easily see that x is observing value up to x is there any issue till uh, anyone is having any issue regarding uh, uh, this problem any doubt
if anyone is having any doubt you can ask okay so simply it is saying that uh, this cdf is talking about it is defined as probability up to x so one okay so just compute this probability compute it like this way so it is talking that uh, probability of up to one that means before one x equal to zero might have already occurred so that means x is taking value zero and one so what is the probability zero okay zero uh, zero one okay so we have to find the probability of this one that means uh, we have to find the probability of x equal to zero and uh, including x equal to one we are summing these two probability these two events some of these two events we are talking about what is the probability of x equal to zero it is one by eight what is the probability of x equal to one it is three by eight because three outcomes map to one so that's where total probability of um, up, up probability that x is observing value up to one it, it is a, what it is one by two that means value of cdf at uh, one is one by two further we have to see uh, what we have to see right hand limit what is the right hand limit so if you are willing to compute right hand limit then here it will say that uh, from the definition of cdf it is talking about probability that x is observing value up to one plus delta that means uh, x is uh, taking value just right of one okay so in that case x what kind of value x might have already observed x might have observed zero and one so we are summing those probability with respect to x equal to zero and with respect to x equal to one. Okay, so uh, so probability value of CDF at one plus delta it would be equal to one by two. So easily we can see that uh, these two values are same. That means this uh, CDF is having right uh, uh, continuity, but uh, jump uh, from right it is continuous, from left it is discontinuous. So there is a jump discontinuity. What kind of it is having right continuous not left okay likewise also you can see other things that cdf of x here we can write it like this way uh, if you try to express cdf of uh, this uh, binomial random variable uh, by introducing unit step function this we are calling it unit step function that means if you talk about ux that means uh, here it is centered around uh, zero that means uh, the value of ux it is a uh, uh, if you are taking x greater than or equal to 0, it is taking 1 value and if you are taking x less than uh, 0, then it is taking 0. It is unit a step. There is a jump at x equal to 0. It is coming like this way. It is coming like this, this point is 1. And if you say that uh, uh, define a function x minus 1, then it is talking about uh, jump at 1. So here the origin has been shifted. You can see that like that at uh, uh, when x is greater than or equal to one, and then this function u of x minus one is observing one, and before one it is observing zero. So that is the thing you can. So this kind of jump discontinuity. Likewise, you can define a u of x minus two, u of x minus three. So if you are trying to find a, a unified notion of uh, cdf of uh, this binomial random variable when it is taking just uh, this value then you can define like this way with the help of unit step function so this is a uni this is unification of this one easily we can say that this function is never continuous everywhere it is having discontinuity what kind of discontinuity jump discontinuity we can say okay so further one more interesting result you can see that uh, between exponential random variable and geometric random variable what is the distribution of exponential random variable it is uh, having a x is here observing continuously value uh, from where to where it is observing value from interval 0 to infinity and uh, the density is defined as lambda time e to the power minus lambda x or uh, you can also put it in unified not notion so you can put in, in unified notion like this way density of uh, this uh, exponential random variable ux you can multiply with unit to function ux just in order to get unified not notion when x is less than zero then it would be zero when x is greater than zero then this would be just uh, lambda time e to the power minus lambda x so that is that and if you come up with geometric random variable uh, then and if you are willing to plot the uh, 
this PDF, it is having exponential decay nature. It is coming like this way. Okay, this is the plot of CDF and a PDF of this exponential random variable uh, that here we are taking f of x. Okay, but if you take geometric random variable, what kind of distribution it is having? It is talking about p into 1 minus p to the power k minus 1. That means geometric random variable is talking about uh, uh, counting number of trial till first success. Okay, so that's where it is coming up. So if you are willing to plot the uh, this this probability mass function of geometric random variable, it would be also having similar to what we call it a discretized version of uh, this uh, exponential distribution. Discretized. It would be something like this way. You can take histogram approach. So geometrically, it will form. it will go dead when value of k is or value of x is very high or you can denote it by another random variable y okay so that is the situation that you can say that if you do discretization of exponential random variable then you will get geometric random variable so how you can do discretization so whenever you introduce discretization always you talk about that uh, if you are taking an interval then how you introduce discretization you come up with some fixed a step size a step size a step size of uh, sub intervals okay so one sub interval we are defining uh, a step size different delta that is a negative of log 1 minus p divided by lambda if you come up with lambda is what parameter of uh, uh, geometric random variable and p is what it is a um, probability you can call it a probability of success uh, it is it directly coming from geometric random variable okay there uh, P is associated with, with geometric random variable, lambda is associated with um, exponential random variable. So you can simplify it here like e to the power minus lambda um, and delta, it would be equal to 1 minus p just for uh, uh, application point of view. So what is happening that uh, so once you introduce uh, this uh, delta partition, you can say that this partition also delta partition. That means you have introduced uh, partition of the interval into uh, sub interval with width delta. Then that uh, partition approach you also can, can say that delta partition. Once you introduce delta partition and if you're taking any arbitrary point from this, if you call it x, then what is the relation between this x and with respect to the delta partition width. So you, you can say that it is it is just n time delta. It is coming n time delta. This is the relation. If you take any x, that would be multiple of that width. Multiple delta, okay. Where n will vary 1 to, it will go up to infinity. So that is the situation, uh, discretization approach, what we call it, or discretized um, geometric random variable is just discretized version of exponential random variable. In the process, if you introduce discretization, then definitely the PDF of exponential random variable and the property mass function of geometric random variable both will uh, share some com common thing. So what is that? That approach we say that like this way. So directly PDF and CDF will not directly exhibit uh, that result. From the uh, PDF and protein mass function will not uh, directly related. So how we, we have to relate it? So that unification approach to uh, see the pattern of distribution, we always say that uh, CDF is giving unified notion. So that's where we will see the uh, relation between CDF of exponential and CDF of geometric. So how you can say that easily we can say that uh, uh, CDF of exponential is related with CDF of this geometric like this way. So it is very easy to compute and this one is very if you are coming with delta then in, in this fashion you can compute CDF of geometric random variable and later you can compute uh, probability mass function of geometric random variable from here. So easily if you exponential is given then you can easily find CDF of uh, geometric uh, by introducing the discretization process with fixed uh, width delta so through this you can get it and if you want to see further plot and plot you can see like this way I have already drawn the plot but one more interesting plot you, you will see it like here
the CDF pattern you can see it like here this way so here the continuous uh, plot it is talking about uh, uh, what CDF of exponential random variable and the zigzag that uh, step uh, step uh, size type what you are seeing that one is talking about CDF of uh, geometric random variable so that uh, we can see it if uh, CDF of exponential random variable is given to you easily you can find CDF of geometric random variable from there so that is the relation you can see it in here one more is interesting property of CDF that you will see with respect to continuous random variable. We know that if you are taking a continuous random variable, then how we can define CDF? We can define CDF like this way. We are defining CDF of continuous random variable that uh, we know that continuous, continuous, every continuous random variable is characterized by a probability law and hence uh, in the process of characterization by probability law, we are, we are getting a probability density function. That means uh, how we can find CDF of that uh, continuous random variable by integrating the corresponding probability density function up to x. So that one is directly coming from the definition of CDF as a probability that x is observing value up to x. So this is the simply we call it definition of CDF. Now we see here various uh, density, probability density function of uh, random variable. Here suppose you are taking a kind of uniform uh, continuous random variable which is taking value uh, observing value x uh, with between a to b uh, with uniform density your density is uniform that means it is a constant density 1 by b minus a so if you are having an outside the interval a to b x is not observing any value that means zero observation density is zero simply so if you are willing to find cdf how you can find cdf up to a the CDF would be zero because X is not observing any value and hence density would be zero and hence CDF would be zero. But X is observing value between A to B only. How it is in a constant way. So CDF how we are getting it by integrating the cross corresponding probability density function. So it is, if you integrate a constant function, what you will get? You will get a linear function. So this linear function and the CDF is linear uh, between A to B after B again X is not observing anything. So the this highest value, the uh, the maximum value of CDF, it will go on with the same value throughout X because X is for the non word here, it will remain constant. Okay. So that situation is coming. This value afterward one value of CDF would be one. So what observe, uh, what kind of situation we observe here in case of continuous random variable uh, here, we observe here CDF happens to be continuous, but there is an issue. What, what issue is here? This function is not smooth everywhere there is an issue here at this point uh, issue you can observe that it is not differentiable at this point also at this point this function is not differentiable so differentiality issue is coming it is not an smooth not a smooth function likewise if you take another uh, pdf probability density function uh, which is having triangular shape what what does it say that means uh, x is observing value uh, between a to b with the uh, density which is linear uh, Sim simply uh, linear function x what is equation of this line and if anyone if i ask it would be just uh, x minus a divided by b minus a so this is the equation of this uh, pdf okay up to b okay at b the pdf is taking value so 2 by b minus a okay that situation is coming so if i'm asking what is the cdf of this one so up to a the value of CDF would be zero just x obje is observing value between a to b that means if you here you observe x is uh, observing value between to between a to b with linear density so if you integrate a density between a to b what uh, if you are integrating a linear function then what would be outcome that would be quadratic so that's why we observe a quadratic CDF between a to b after b what would be CDF it would be fixed that one it would be equal to one so again we observe this kind of situation so likewise everywhere what is happening that if someone is saying that can we get a very interesting kind of cdf which will approximate uh, approximate or give approximation of any kind of cdf so overall what kind of situation you will observe that situation is coming like that cdf is having a in an approximate way cdf cdf is having uh, what sigmoid nature so it is uh, when x is approaching to minus infinity it is almost zero when x is ap approaching to 
infinity it is one so it is having this structure we are calling sigmoid and if you someone is saying that what is this point if anyone was asked what is this point where cdf is having 50 percent chance 50 percent and that uh, 50 uh, observed value are having this cdf less than uh, this point this we call it threshold point also you can call it threshold t denote and after this uh, x is having cdf greater than this one at uh, this here you can say asymptotic to one you can draw here asymptotic to one it will go on like this way so here x and here plot up uh, capital f of x so this structure we are calling it sigmoidal structure and it is very much uh, interesting kind of uh, it is having interesting role in neural network most of activation function if you talk in neural network they are in the framework of sigmoid so sigmoid kind of it is playing very important role in neural network i would like to say that so here uh, what is this point where the uh, cdf is taking here 50 percent uh, complete 50 percent segment is coming like this segment 50 percent coming like this way so what is this point this point is your central point of x all possible if you are x is observing various possible value this would be the expectation or mean or cent better call it expectation it would be expectation of x so about this 50 percent division would be there so we will talk about that's why we are talking about here in today's lecture regarding normal distribution because the above cdf what i had plotted that one is the cdf of normal distribution or ascender normal distribution uh, normal distribution simply you can call it so we will discuss in detail what is normal distribution and before uh, that we need to discuss motivation behind uh, normal distribution why we discuss about normal distribution one simple motivation you can come from the binomial distribution uh, what is happening that we had already seen that Poisson distribution. This one is not a good approach that uh, you don't uh, try to answer it. If you want to learn, then try to answer things uh, clearly what I have already covered till now. It is very much simple that it would be and choose k p to the power k 1 minus p to the power just uh, that binomial just n minus k that i had already this uh, discussed about here k is fixed k is fixed so this is the pdf okay if i am asking to compute uh, the probability this probability if i so you have to compute this one and if suppose n is very large and p is very small things would be very much complicated so that's why i had discussed about approximation of this one by ozone distribution approximation because Poisson distribution is dealing with just exponential p to the power minus lambda times lambda to the power k divided by factorial yeah, factorial k so tell me which one is easy to compute this or this which one is then your question would be what is the value of lambda lambda equal to np so you directly you will get here first one if n is very large and p is very small first one would be it would be very difficult to compute from the computational that you uh, if you go that also i had already discussed that uh, how it is uh, taking time in order to compute this one that means uh, com this computation is very tough if you go for p this situation p is large and p is small and n is large so it, it would be very much complicated and if you just willing to compute this one this would be very simple because k is already given k is fixed there is no any issue lambda is already fixed lambda you know just you have to find it to the power minus lambda what value you will have so you will get this this value easily from the exponential product easily you will get this value and lambda to the power lambda k everything is given so this computation of this value is very simple and this one is giving approximate probability of uh, approximate value of this probability so here when p is very large uh, p is small n is large then we talk about Poisson approximation of a binomial distribution but what situation is given that we don't have any information about p whether p is small or large we don't know that but only we are having information that n is large when n is large in that case we can't approximate it by 
Poisson distribution if p is not revealed that is small okay so in that case what is happening that best approximation is coming with respect to normal distribution normal distribution is giving a better approximation of uh, probability of variable distribution uh, this probability so normal distribution that's why we are uh, we will see further more here like here we can see like this way so if we are taking a binomial distribution with probability of success 0.5 that means you are taking a bias unbiased point then that's in that case if uh, number of trial is 40 then you see this kind of plot of the uh, protein mass function this is the plot of protein mass function if you're taking number of trials uh, 80 if you are increasing then this protein mass function it will be more denser it would be more denser and if you take uh, for number of trial 160 for the same protein of success then it would be something more denser it is uh, it is more denser you can say easily that and it looks like little bit uh, continuum pattern is coming if you are so what is simply if you are increasing the uh, number of trials so you see some kind of uh, continuum value of x x is observing value uh, very closely to each, each other the continuum value so this kind of situation we observe so this situation if you try to increase n so what is happening that here we don't focus much of about uh, probability of success just we keep on increasing the n value of n so what is happening that in that situation the corresponding binomial distribution uh, the distri distribution can be better approximated by normal distribution so it would be normal distribution approximately normal distribution that situation is coming so uh, why further if you talk about many data set if you uh, collect trying to collect thing uh, try to collect then it would be well modeled by normal distribution like what are those so if you are collecting uh, data like height height if you are collecting height of all the people then and if you try to plot the probability mass function of those one those one so actually uh, here <laughs> it would be approximately uh, normal distribution it will have approximate normal distribution like uh, weight will have distribution what kind of distribution normal distribution and if you uh, take another kind of data like income data and if you try to transform that uh, through logarithmic way then again log of income would be normally distributed so that kind of situation is many way so normal distribution always occurs in a practical problem so that's where we have to study normal distribution in detail in detail and also apart from that from the sector limit we see that sample mean it it would converge to the actual mean sample mean would converge to the actual mean uh, actual when sample size is uh, very large so this convergence is talking about a convergence in probability so that also that one is part of module theory we will discuss in detail so simply i would like to say that when n is very large then a binomial distribution can be approximated by a normal distribution in that case and P is what that one is uh, actually um, value of the um, expectation of this normal distribution and this one is the variance uh, this NP is what actually it is coming as uh, expectation of this binomial distribution and this one is what it is variance it is called so we are taking variance of binomial distribution and uh, because n product of np is very easy to compute this product is also easy to compute so that's where directly if given n and p we can easily find the expectation and variance of a given binomial random variable okay and if you are saying that uh, how we can approximate a binomial random variable by normal then normal random variable we always characterize by two parameters one is mean and another another one is variance so that's where the what mean we will take we will mean we will take mean of the binomial and variance of the binomial in that process we will define a continuous random variable with this normal distribution when n is very large and when uh, lambda is very large we say that uh, Poisson distribution also can be well approximated by normal distribution and we know that if you are taking Poisson distribution and someone is saying that what is the expectation of a Poisson distribution it is equal to lambda and what is the variance of a Poisson distribution that one is also equal to lambda uh, that's why that's why lambda is the parameter of a Poisson distribution both are lambda okay so here uh, if you are trying to approximate Poisson distribution by normal distribution then we have to come up with the mean and variance so we will take mean of the Poisson distribution and variance of the Poisson distribution that's where here we are defining a normal distribution with mean uh, lambda and variance lambda in the case when n 
lambda is very large. So that various approximation we will do it here through normal distribution. And so that's that's where we are we are discussing about normal distribution in detail. What does it talk about? So suppose we are taking a random variable which is continuously observing value from interval minus infinity to infinity. That means simply we say that any real number x is observing any real number. Okay, and uh, the probability law of this observation it is defined by a symmetric Gaussian function. Here the probability law of observing uh, x uh, what x is the observing value from r. It is actually established by symmetric Gaussian function with two important parameters mu and lambda. Later we will say that mu would be expectation of this x and sigma square would be variance of this one. Later we will see that. So we are defining the probability law for this random variable by this. And hence this, this function we are calling it a Gaussian function. It, it is introduced by Gauss. So that's why we are calling it is a Gaussian function and and hence we call uh, this one is simply it is a normal distribution and the corresponding random variable we are calling it a, a normal random variable okay and if someone is willing to verify that what is meaning of mu so just try to find expectation of this random variable and if you are willing to find expectation it would be just equal to mu and if you are willing to find variance of this one uh, what would be variance of this uh, normal normally distributed random variable it would be equal to sigma square so that's why we are saying that mu and sigma square are parameter of uh, this normally distributed random variable. Okay, you can see situation like this way. This is the plot of uh, uh, density of norm normal distribution. You can see that normal distribution is normally distributed uh, or distributed symmetrically. That means 50% falls uh, before mean. Mean is we have taken equal to one. Mean is equal to one. 50% falls before. 50% area is before mean and 50% area is after mean okay and we see some tailness tailness is there in both side both sided tail observe okay if you are willing to find uh, cdf of this one if you integrate so here cdf if you are willing to find probability up to x equal to mu that means equal to one that it would be what it would be 50% because data is uh, evenly distributed uh, both side about mean okay 50 percent this side and 50 percent this side. symmetric distribution what we are calling it so that's way uh, here you can see that uh, it is uh, taking concavity up uh, it is having cdf is having concavity concavity up up to x equal to one that up to mean position after mean position uh, concavity is down why because uh, uh, here it the cdf has to be uh, uh, it has it has a, a concavity which is having a down concavity why because uh, then it will be asymptotic to y equal to 1 oh, okay so due to this uh, down concavity it will be asymptotic to 1 so that's where in that process we see that this is the sigmoidal nature of cdf of uh, normal distribution this one is the sigmoidal this nature we are calling a sigmoidal nature okay now further if you are willing to uh, get more application of uh, this uh, normal distribution so what we have to do we have to come up with idea of standardization okay and uh, and hence uh, we will get a standard normal distribution what is the uh, standardization so suppose we are having a random variable x and which is having a finite mean mu and finite variance sigma square then this random variable always we can standardize what is meaning of standardize that means we are having a random variable with zero mean and one variance so that is meaning of a standard random variable so right now i'm not talking about a standard normal random variable just i'm talking about a standard normal uh, a standard random variable a stratification process so if you are having a random variable x with finite mean mu and finite variance sigma square then it, and then transform this random variable x to z by introducing this uh, transformation and that means you first you deviate the random variable by corresponding expectation and after that divide by uh, a standard deviation so in that process you are getting a new random variable z and if you are willing to find expectation of this random variable uh, z it is very simple to find expectation would be zero it is very simple just apply the law of expectation so here expectation of uh, what it would be x minus mu divided by sigma and sigma is what it is fixed for x sigma is fixed so 1 by sigma will come out and we will have just expectation of x minus sigma uh, x minus mu 
and we know that mu is constant and simply if you are willing to find expectation of uh, this uh, deviated mean then what would be uh, deviated random variable it would be expectation of x minus expectation of mu and mu is a constant so it would be equal to mu so here what if we know expectation of x it is actually mu so that's why we are having expectation of z is actually talking about 1 by sigma times mu minus mu so what does it give it give equal to 0 so uh, expectation of z is equal to 0 likewise if you, you can verify that variance of z is also equal to 1 so here this z we are calling it a standard random variable that has been uh, that means x has been ascribed to z okay so what is the relation between x and z so we can see relation like this way that means you can say that uh, x you can get back x why by this linear transformation or this affine transformation that means multiply z by the standard deviation and uh, translate it by the expectation okay uh, amount so here the, the amount through which you are translating the standard random variable that becomes expectation of this one and the amount through which you scale the z random variable at that would become a standard deviation of x so that is the customization process what we call it now uh, we come up to so if suppose your x is this x is a normal distribution then z we will call it uh, a standard normal random variable if x is normally distributed or x is a normal random variable then z would be uh, a standard normal random variable so if z is a standard normal random variable then what is the probability density function for z because we know that due to a standardization of x as a a normal random variable z is having mean 0 and variance 1 so easily we can define the protein density function of z how it is just very simple kind of this exponential function this one is uh, sorry it is uh, talking about exponential okay so it is very simple for, uh, uh, definition you can see it like this way and if you are willing to find uh, cdf of this one so you have to integrate this cdf of um, uh, pdf of this uh, standard normal uh, standard normally distributed random variable uh, integrate and you will get this it, this one is talking about cdf this is the cdf of uh, uh, a standard normal random variable and the normal table in the normal table value of this one is given to you so 50 percent of that would be given to you that means only for positive x would be given to you uh, and easily you can find value of negative x due to symmetric property because uh, both are symmetric uh, both value are symmetric about uh, uh, mean position that's where you just easily you can compute that okay uh, so anyone would like to say that what is the relation between phi of x and phi of minus x anyone what is the relation between phi of x and phi of minus x if x is x is positive then minus x would be definitely negative so anyone know how how we can find the relation between these two so if someone is willing to find the relation between these two what you do uh, we know that here uh, uh, suppose x is here greater than or equal to zero positive and then minus x would be less than zero so we are willing to find value of x in term of pi of x here we are taking here concept okay take z here phi of this phi uh, j, till now we had already seen notation of uh, cdf so notation of cdf it was uh, what notation of cdf it was something like that uh, capital f we had taken capital f but specifically for uh, cdf of astronomical random variable we are taking notation phi why because here uh, uh, z is having some interesting kind of property that's why we are giving a specific notation. this phi is only meant for a standard normal random variable cdf of a standard normal random variable this phi is actually equal to f but it is this phi notation is especially for a standard normal random variable don't represent any other cdf uh, with phi just only for uh, cdf of a standard normal random variable we are taking notation phi okay so here i am asking that to compute here here usually you can say that this is the pdf of uh, this uh, a standard normal random variable it is very much symmetric about origin because mean is origin and uh, it is symmetric you can see the deviation what is the one sigma deviation what is the one two sigma deviation easily you can see that this is the pdf of a standard normal random variable and if uh, my suggestion would be that uh, we are willing to find value of phi for minus x okay so how we can find 
so just we will go to define here from the definition of cdf what does it say it says that property that x is observing value or z notation we will say it better take notation z z is always uh, a specific notation for a standard normal random variable so that's where notation z we will take that this graph same about y axis yeah symmetric about y axis but uh, uh, yeah there is a symmetricity that's plot of cdf it would be something like this uh, phi is talking about cdf so it is coming like this way this is the plot of cdf asymptotic to one when x is approaching to at this point would be 0.5 yeah so what reverting is so you need to so suppose x is you are taking from here then minus x would be here symmetric about origin well so minus x would be here so uh, my question is that how you can find take better notation z not x uh, actually z is made for just under normal so always it will confuse that take notation z minus z so my question is that how you can find value of minus z because you don't want to the value of uh, phi of minus z would be not given in normal table in normal table only value of positive z is given phi of z when z is positive it would be given to you you have to utilize that so that's why how you can uh, utilize that so that's uh, that's why i'm coming with derivation of this one representation of this one in term of this so it is talking about protein that z is taking value up to minus z a small z okay and if you simplify it what does it talk about it is talking about uh, here from this symmetry if you see z would be here then minus z would be here if z is here minus z would be here then if you see uh, this tail property and this tail property if it is some this tail property both are same so what is name of this tail property this tail property name is property that z is observing value greater than equal to z and uh, what is name of this tail property geometrically i am trying to visualize this what is name of this property this one is talking about that property that z is taking value less than equal to minus z so that's way uh, we say that if you are willing to compute this property that uh, left tail property this simply left tail property what we call it so it is just equal to right tail property that uh, z is taking value greater than equal to small z a small z and how you can compute this property so uh, again here observe you, you just introduce partition of all possible value of z so partition it is introducing partition so one partition it, this segment it is talking about z is greater than equal to this is small z and this segment it is talking about z is less than equal to uh, this a small z so this uh, this one is complement of this one so here this property is equal to property that uh, complement of z greater than equal to a small z complement what does it so from the definition of uh, that complement property it would be what one minus sorry uh, what is the complement of this anyone what is the complement of this z is greater than equal to z what is the complement of this one complement of this one is z is less than equal to a small z complement of this one this okay and what is name of this if you try to focus oh, it is phi of z value of cdf at z so that's why if you are willing to calculate the uh, value of cdf for negative value of z then oh, how you can compute it is just equal to relation is it is coming like this way phi of minus z is equal to 1 minus phi of z so normal table in normal table generally you won't see value of uh, phi for negative value of z only you will see value of phi for positive uh, including zero 
okay and if you know those value easily you can find through this relation you can find value of five four negative zero easily you can find so this relation is very much important you need to understand this one everyone need to understand this in order to solve yes okay okay fine so other things other application we will discuss in next class because it is already above 45 minutes so further if you are having any